Warning, now let's investigate the notion that an airplane will stall at any airspeed in any attitude, but only one angle of attack. Now when we say this, we are speaking in basic low altitude conditions. Because of all the new private jets flying at high altitude, it's important to understand that there is an exception to this stall at one angle of attack rule. Remember when I said in part one that some air molecules stick to the wing and create boundary layer? Well, the problem with being at high altitude is that this adhesiveness of the gas or air gets less sticky with altitude and it's part of the reason why an airplane stalls at a lower angle of attack at these altitudes. Critical angle of attack. Now let's investigate the saying that an airplane can stall at any airspeed, any attitude, but only one angle of attack. Now, if we are flying this airplane, this may sound confusing because the only visual indication of stall is this green arc on the airspeed indicator that shows that the airplane will stall at 60 if we are at gross weight, if we have a clean wing, meaning flaps are up, and we are maintaining the same altitude. Now, let's turn on our angle of attack indicator, and sure enough, the airplane has stalled at 60. Now, what do you expect to feel, hear, and see when we're on this non-working side of the wing. The first thing you may feel is the airplane buffeting. Now, buffeting is a natural way for the airplane to stall, and engineers have worked many hours to get it to buffet properly, but not all airplanes buffet prior to a stall. The second thing you may see is a stall warning light, and it may be flashing. Uh, you may hear a stall warning horn, or some airplanes have a stick shaker where the yoke actually shakes as you approach a stall. And a couple of airplanes have a stick pusher that pushes the yoke forward at the stall. Now, the stall warning light, the stall warning horn, the stall warning shaker, the stall warning pusher, how do you think those systems are activated? That's correct. You have an angle of attack device on your airplane, and you may not have recognized it. So what would be your immediate response if you activated one of these stall warning systems? Of course. You would want to get to the working side of the wing where lift equals weight. Now I'll take the airplane off pause. I'm going to push the yoke forward and let's see what happens. Here we go. We came out. We're from red to green as our dream. Red, lift is less than weight. Green, we are flying again. Uh, one other thing I want you to note is our G meter, which shows you gravity. We used about a half a G. And as my friends at APS would say, push until you're light in the seat straps. Now, let's look at the airspeed indicator and try to determine how we can stall the airplane at any airspeed. Now, I'm going to get a little aggressive on the yoke. I'm going to push down. I'm not adding power at this point, but I'm just doing this. We'll take the airplane up to 100, and bingo. I've stalled the airplane at, what, almost 90. So, as you can see, our green art is not going to save us. Okay, the next concept that I want to talk about is our base to final turn or final approach to the runway. Uh, sadly, this is the one we read about on the front page of a lot of newspapers. Now, 
when the flaps are extended, we won't read the whole airplane's angled attack, not just the wings. Now, just for demonstrational purposes, I'm going to bring flaps up and the protractors come out automatically. And that way we can show you each side's angle of attack, each side of the wing. Now, to do this particular stall, we need to have a side force or what we call a side slip. Now, when you apply a side slip, one wing will have a higher angle of attack than the other. And why that's so important is that wing with the higher angle of attack will drop first. Let me show you a little bit of side slip. I'm just going to use the rudder. Now, there's other factors that may cause side slip, but this is it. But you can see here that this is what we call side slip. So we're going to turn our base leg to our final leg. I have it in a turn. We're slowing the airplane down. And as we set this up, as we come in, I'm going to push the rudder to the high side of the wing, which is a slip. And when I do that, here we go. Here is the stall. Here is the slip. And there's what happens to the airplane. The next stall is very dangerous because it's so easy to set up. A skidding turn happens when you overshoot the runway and then push the rudder to nose the airplane back towards the runway. Think of it. If you are in a left bank and you push a left rudder, you are not going to snap upward like I just showed you in the slip, but you're going to snap downward and with very little altitude to recover. Okay, I'm slowing in the left bank as the wind pushes me past the center line. I push the rudder to the low side of the wing, so I am pointed towards the runway, and then here we go. I'm looking straight at the ground. Now we'll end this video with a segment from our original video where Jeff does a great job of explaining side slip. This is what is known as a spin. Only flight instructors are required to demonstrate these, and the airplane must be approved for these maneuvers. There are many things to note, but there are two of utmost importance. One, the airplane is stalled and stays in a stall. And two, yaw is present in the stall due most commonly to inappropriate rudder application by the pilot. However, yaw can also be propelled or aggravated by contributions from P-factor, slipstream, asymmetric thrust, various control failures, or even environmental airfoil contamination. Any of these factors may lead to local angles of attack that initially differ at the stall, which create roll-off. In a spin, one wing is more stalled than the other. I found this in the FAA's Airplane Flying Handbook. To accomplish spin recovery, the manufacturer's recommended procedures should be followed. In the absence of the manufacturer's recommended spin recovery procedures and techniques, the following spin recovery procedures are recommended. Step one, reduce the power, the throttle, or throttles, to idle. And that's because a fast turning prop is one big gyro. Step two, position the ailerons to neutral. Step three, apply full opposite rudder against the rotation and that should stop the spinning. Step four, apply a positive and brisk straightforward movement of the elevator control forward of the neutral to break the stall. And that's our saying, from red to green is our dream. Now you note here they say positive and brisk and the reason that you would want to use positive and brisk movements is because the airplane is stalled and the flight controls are less effective. Step five. Now this step has been added. After the spin rotation stops, neutralize the rudder. Now spin instructors tell me that this one is long overdue. 
Step six, begin applying back elevator pressure to raise the nose to level flight. And you have to be cautious here because you can pull the airplane into a secondary stall. This is Tom Schiff-Shunis saying thank you for watching our Alpha Trainer video. Remember, you cannot learn everything about angle of attack and stalls in this 10-minute video. So get with your local flight instructor. Okay, the last thing. If you'd like to submit to us a video using Alpha Trainer, we would be happy to review it, and we may use it on our website. Thanks again.